Last June, Robin Shute sent his race car up a mountain to win the 99th running of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. It was his second win in three years, but the next race is the 100th running, and a lot of people are pulling out all the stops for this one. So Robin needs his car to be faster, lighter, and better. I asked how I could help, and he said, can you make me a new steering wheel? Having recently finished my own steering wheel, I said, yeah, probably. A few months ago, I made a steering wheel for my Honda S600. It turned out nice, but there were a few things I didn't love about it. For one, the color was too light for the car. I had tried to roast some maple in my oven, but I ended up burning it because I rent a place and therefore have the cheapest possible oven. I also had some gaps and tear outs in the wood, so I decided to make a second one. I managed to piece together enough of the roasted maple to get one good wheel. I had a template laser cut by Send Cut Send to go in the center so all the pieces would line up and I wouldn't get any of those gaps. I also took a lot more shallow passes when using the router. This prevented any wood tearing out, and I went for a brushed center instead of polished. Perhaps most importantly, I made a center cap. All good steering wheels need a badge in the middle. Unfortunately, not many of these are left from the old stock of 60-year-old Hondas, so I had one 3D printed, and then I very carefully painted the gold on the inside logo. Very nice. So I've made two steering wheels, and they both turned out pretty great. I could probably make a carbon fiber one for a race car. Let's find out. There are some requirements for a proper race car steering wheel. Most importantly, it needs to look cool. This means carbon fiber, colorful buttons, knobs, cool looking paddle shifters, and a logo in the middle. The old steering wheel has most of this stuff, but it also has this screen up top that's not super useful. It's heavy and it blocks the view of the larger screen that will go behind it. Other than that, the wheel is pretty great. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate the rough shape of the wheel, but remove this area here. We're gonna add some rotary dials, upgrade the paddle shifters on the back, and we're gonna make some custom molded grips that exactly fit Robin's hands. And we're gonna do this all for less than 1% of the cost of this guy. To start this adventure, we took a scan of the old wheel. The geometry was pretty good, so it was a pretty good place to start. I pulled that into CAD and drew up a new center and new grips. The center part will be carbon fiber. We're gonna make this a quarter of an inch thick or about six millimeters, but we're gonna do it with two layers. The buttons and dials we're using are made for a panel thickness of three millimeters or less, so they will only go through one layer. I drew up duplicate layers and had Send Cut Send router them out for me. They also made us the panels for the shifters. By the way, Send Cut Send is now shipping to Canada, which should be great news for, uh, let's see, 5.6% uh, of you. Also, how come you guys aren't hitting that bell notification? I'm below the typical percentage for this. You're embarrassing me in front of the algorithm. You may have noticed that there are no holes for the buttons or dials that I specifically said would be on this steering wheel. Well, we didn't know exactly where they would be, so I had these parts cut out knowing that we could drill the mounting for those later. For the grips, I made them in the same style, pretty much copying what was scanned earlier, but I did undersize part of them in the middle so we can add material to make custom molded grips. The idea is that we have the tips of the wheels at the normal geometry, but we shrink the middle so we can fill that in with some pliable molding epoxy. Then we can mold that part to Robin's hands. So I drew that up in CAD and, um, hmm, that looks like a penis. I have accidentally made dildos for steering wheel handles. Ah, screw it, let's send it off to be 3D printed. When the 3D printed sex toys arrived a few weeks later, it was just a matter of snapping them onto the carbon for a test fit. Yeah, that looks great. Totally inappropriate, but great. So remember how just a moment ago we got the carbon fiber, but we didn't have cutouts for the buttons and dials? Well, now we know where they're gonna go. I'll just tape or print out to the carbon and drill my pilot holes. Then I'll throw it in the drill press and drill out the holes to size. If you decide to make a steering wheel, I highly recommend not taking this approach. Figure out where your buttons are gonna be first and have Send Cut Send do it all for you because the carbon will absolutely wreck your drill bits. I completely toasted one of my step bits and severely dulled another. Also, the holes don't cut very cleanly, more so as your bits get dull. You can see the outside edge from Sen Cut Sen looking great and my dremeled attempt to clean up my bad cuts looking pretty sloppy. I thought about just having a new one of these made, but it doesn't really affect the functionality and nobody's going to see it once the wheel is all together anyway. It's not like it's going on YouTube or anything. Anyway, like I said, the buttons and switches are made for a panel no thicker than three millimeters and the wheel is twice that. So one of the layers will have the holes cut to the size of the buttons and switches and the other one will have the holes oversized so they can be recessed in the back. Once that's all done, I can glue it together. I used super glue for this. It's a pretty good composite glue. We'll also have bolts through all the layers and the grips epoxied around holding it all together. 
I clamped it all down and then let it set overnight, then went back and unclamped it to find it looking even worse. This white film happens a lot with super glue. This is not good. As I said before, the most important part of a race car steering wheel is that it looks cool and this is looking pretty not cool. Fortunately, with a little acetone, the film came right off and it cleaned up nicely. And now it's time to add the buttons and the knobs with the larger hole in the back plate. These are all recessed in the back halfway with the nut on the back recessed for the buttons and the knobs have the main body recessed in. There are four buttons on the front and a total of four knobs unless you count the knobs on the handles, knob being British slang for, you know what, it doesn't matter. The wheel will have a quick release and lots of wires coming off the buttons, so we have to make a cover for the back. Robin drew that up and we sent it off to our buddy Travis over at T New Design to see and see it out. It came out great. I took it to my local coating place and had them anodize it black because, you know, it's gotta look cool. We didn't have the exact location of the wires for the paddle shifter, so I lined those up best I could, center punched it, and drilled holes for the wires. I added the carbon panels and bolted the shifters up to the cover and then moved on to the grips. As I said, the grips will be custom molded. For this, we used a two-part sculpting epoxy. This stuff is great. It holds its shape pretty well and is moldable for a few hours. I kneaded up some of it and layered it around the, um, you know, these things. I got it mostly consistent, adding some where it needed and taking away some where it didn't need to be. Then I gave it to Shoot, who squeezed it ever so slightly to get his grip set into it. We did this a couple of times to make sure everything was evened out pretty well and then let it sit overnight. The grips were a little bit rough looking. You can see the creases from the gloves he was wearing when he made the impressions on the wheel. I added a little bit more epoxy in some places to smooth it out and to fill the gaps between the uh, knobs. I also sanded down a few of the high spots. I didn't want to sand too much. The grips look a little bumpy and rough the way they are, but I didn't want to remove the perfectly molded grips that we put in there. After they were roughed up, I sprayed several coats of Plasti Dip onto them. I didn't get a video of this for some reason, so you'll have to use your imagination. You know what spray painting looks like, right? We weren't entirely sure what the best coating would be. Plasti Dip might not be durable enough, but it has a grippy texture that's perfect for a steering wheel, so we're gonna give it a go. And now the knobs are gone. These knobs, not those knobs. We haven't put those knobs on yet. So we added those. We still need the labels for the buttons and knobs, but that'll come later. Other than that, we're really only missing one thing. Every good steering wheel needs a logo in the center. This car was originally made by Wolf, and the old wheel had that logo on it, but it's been modified so extensively by Shoot and his team, the Sendy Club, that I thought it needed their logo. So I threw some aluminum in the CNC and milled out a small emblem. I gave the middle section a brushed look with some Scotch-Brite, and then I polished up the top and the bottom. Not bad. Not bad at all. Then I did a test fit on the wheel, upside down then right side up. I carefully cut out some strips of double-sided tape and put them on the back, then stuck it on for good, but not before making sure it was perfectly centered. And there it is, a new steering wheel with no screen in the way. More controls, it has custom molded grips, it weighs less, I forgot to measure it, but it is noticeably lighter than the old one. Light enough so that Robin Shute can be a three-time king of the mountain at this year's Pikes Peak Hill Climb? Probably. And if any of the Formula One teams out there would like to have 300 steering wheels for the price you are currently spending on one, Call me. Being your own boss is pretty great. I'm assuming. I don't know. I have a boss. My boss is the algorithm. And the algorithm has told me to tell you to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And go ahead and hit that bell too. You guys aren't hitting the bell. You gotta hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, I'm gonna get fired. And I'm gonna have to go work at TikTok. Nobody wants that. Hit the bell. Do it.